What's up guys, it's Dan from DC Motorsports. Today, we're doing a video on the dually. It's been fighting me, so a little bit of an injection pump problem, which I'll show you in a second. Pretty much the uh, injector pulse width or closure time is completely off. Still runs, just uh, it's keeping the injectors open a lot longer than they should be. So today we're going to be installing a replacement injection pump and also a fluid damper. Uh, this is a cold start. It's about 60 degrees today, so it's not too cold, but she's been sitting overnight. And this is what happens every morning when I start her up. I got the air compressor in the bed kicking on. Waiting for the glow plugs to turn off. Now she clears up yeah so she sits there chugging for a bit and then she clears up other than that she runs completely fine no check engine lights um, so we're gonna take a cruise over to the shop and we're gonna get this new pump in enjoy the video all right guys we got the dually in the garage see you behind me and uh, we have everything laid out on the table here. Pretty much everything we're gonna need for today's video. Um, I'm gonna turn down the uh, music before uh, YouTube decides to tell me that I don't own rights to this music, because they will do that. I'll put it back on when I work. I like listening to Upchurch. So, down here on the table, we have pretty much everything we'll be working with today. I try to work organized and clean for the most part. It's just a lot easier. So, what we're gonna be doing here first, we're gonna be disconnecting the upper in intake. So you just unplug a couple of these sensors, six bolts, the boost line, and uh, these V-band clamps, get these off of here. And then uh, we'll get the upper intake off and we'll go with the lower intake. All right, we have the upper intake off now. Got it off the turbo. Word to the wise, anybody who's still running a, uh, the factory CDR that goes right into the intake with that metal pipe that goes over the turbo, uh, replace it with rubber before you uh, gouge out your nice new turbo like I did but uh we got the upper intake off you got your six bolts I have my boost bolt air temperature sensor and a manifold air pressure sensor and the new style actually comes with this adapter that actually retains the v-band on the turbo so you get a nice clean install that way so now what we're going to work on is I'm going to unplug the rest of this wiring harness, which is PT Wiring Solutions. It's on Quadstar's website. And disconnect these fuel lines. And we're going to work on pulling the lower intake manifold off. All right, guys. We got the uh, intake manifold out, the lower intake manifold. Uh, on the earlier models, like this 94 that I have, they do have this alternator bracket that sits here. And this front stud goes to the coolant crossover. And then it braces the alternator. If you don't have this bracket, you need to be running it. It helps support the alternator. You'll throw belts. Uh, I had a good buddy, Zach, who you'll see pop up in my videos every now and then. He had an issue with that. Um, I'm a stickler for putting all bolts back where they came from. Makes it a lot easier to put everything back together later on. So.
this is what we got going on right now there's my injection pump that's coming out so now that we have the lower intake manifold out what we're going to work on is we're going to work on getting these injector lines off and then i'm not sure how well you can see this i'll try to get this on video but there's one bolt focus there's that one bolt that's down there sorry nut that's down there it is a 12.15 millimeter there's also one up here at the top and there is another one down there if you can see that i know my camera's not focusing but i'll show you that stud down there is where there is supposed to be a nut uh mine had vibrated off and i was too lazy to put it back on but uh i'm gonna be putting that back on today so we're gonna get all that off and also we'll also be pulling off the front of this oil fill because that's how you get to the inje injection pump gear bolts but i'll make a video for that so we'll catch up with you guys in a little bit we'll get these injector lines off and we'll get the back three bolts unbolted and then i'll come back and uh we'll do this all right guys so i have right now all the injection pump lines off i have the bottom two nuts off the top nuts cracked loose but it's still there now for this you don't need to remove your fan, fan shroud like i did and also remove the fan but uh we are doing a fluid damper today so just makes it a little easier and i could also show you inside of here the uh the three little bolts you can only see two right now but uh those are 13 millimeter and uh you're gonna have to rotate the engine over so i just leave the belt on for this purpose and uh that way you can get those out now a lot of guys are saying you know you got to be careful not to drop them into the uh oil pan because then you're going to be taking out your engine just to get these bolts out uh it is a little bit tricky uh i have a magnet trick that i like to use uh works pretty well you could also once you get your socket lined up in there and you crack them loose, uh, you can guide it out with, uh, if your finger is small enough, uh, you can get a finger past the socket so you could actually get your hand in there and keep one hand on a bolt to keep it in the socket as you bring it out. Um, I've never had a problem doing it this way. I know a lot of other guys, they use a, uh, a toilet paper tube. Uh, they shove it in there, they cut it down so that way uh, if they drop the bolt off the socket, uh, it won't drop all the way down there. Now over here, we have the upper fan shroud off. We have the fan, which is the Duramax fan with the HD clutch. And this is a very handy tool if you have any sort of spin on fan clutch like we do. This just holds it and this is uh, adjustable to any different sizes that you may have. That's a time saver. Uh, I would like to give a quick shout out to Sapphire Designs for uh, some apparel that we got. Now, this was given to me by my brother a couple years ago as kind of a joke. Uh, I, I ended up loving it so much that I got my girlfriend Danielle one. So, um, way before there was DC Motorsports, a buddy of mine came up with Ping Pong Automotive. So that's a little lesson behind that but uh as of right now we're gonna get these we're gonna get those three bolts out of the injection pump we're gonna take that one nut off the back and then we're gonna pull the pump out all right guys we get the pump out as you see in there it's a 506 it has the navistar casting numbers this is actually a 2006 navistar block now, one thing I do want to mention to everybody that is sending a pump as a core back to John over at Quadstar, please remember to pull out 
this fitting. It's a 14 millimeter. You just unscrew it. And then what you want to do is you're going to take your pump over to a drain pan, turn it upside down. As you see, there's still lots of fluid in there. It is very important that you guys drain these pumps before you send them back as a core. Um, UPS gets a little uh, angry when there's fuel spilling out of something. Um, it's also a little more messy for the rebuilder when he gets it. But uh, please, guys, just uh, keep in mind, please drain all the fluid fuel out of your injection pumps. You don't have to clean it. You know, you don't have to wipe them down, but you just got to get all the, the fuel out of them. That's it. I usually leave mine turned upside down with that fitting out for well, about a half hour. Just let it sit. And uh, as you can see from earlier, we do have all three nuts now. I actually had to find the third one. I stashed it somewhere last time and I didn't remember where I put it. So, next up now, since I have everything apart anyway, um, I was actually going to start the fluid damper, but I will um, continue on with the injection pump. I'm going to get the new injection pump. It's over there on the table with the gasket. I'm going to get that situated back in the engine bay here. Get the bolts back in the uh, injection pump gear and uh, we'll get this back together. Uh, one thing I will say that makes this job a little bit easier, what you could do with your new pump is you could stick it next to your old pump and you see on the rotor itself there's that um, dowel that sticks out. Now obviously that one's on the opposite side that that one is so to make your life a lot easier when you go to install this rotate so the dowel is somewhat in the closest position that it can be to match the other pump when you took it out that way when you slide it back in you don't move the cam gear around and uh, it goes together a lot easier now, the injection pump can only sit in there one way. The rotor will only go into the gear one way because of that dowel pin. So it's kind of a safety thing. You can't really mess it up. So we'll get that done. We'll get this back in here, and then we'll check back in. All right, we got the pump back in. Get all three nuts on it this time. You can see the one down there, this, and the one down there. We also have three bolts back in the cam pump. Now, um, what I did take out before that I didn't mention was this is PT Wiring Solutions wiring harness, replacement wiring harness from Quadstar. Uh, it's very good quality. Everything has been thought of here. All factory connections, everything's loomed, everything's heat shrunk. It even has this um, this wire wrapping on it that actually helps with the engine bay. All brand new connectors. I know a lot of these like to break off because they get heat soaked, especially this one. This is for your optical sensor up top of the pump. And another one that likes to break is your manifold air pressure sensor. All these little tabs dry out over time and they like to break. Now, from the factory, this wire harness is snaked underneath the intake manifold. Now when you do the upgrade, John suggests running it on the top side of the manifold so it doesn't get as heat soaked underneath. Uh, there's more than enough wire for all the sensors to plug in and reach, so that's really not an issue. Uh, if you're not running the turbo diesel engine cover, which I'm not because it doesn't work with the uh, upper plenum. Um, you just find two bolts that fit in the intake cover holes and you get some wire supports and that's how I keep mine all nice and neat. Now you'll also notice how dry the inside of my intake is and that is all because of this little quad star catch can. 
This thing works wonders. It's well worth the money spent on it. it. Keeps everything nice and dry, like it's supposed to be. You don't want to be sucking in oil, oil vapor, um, because there will be oil vapor coming out from the CDR itself, especially if your CDR is bad. Um, and instead of going right from the CDR into your intake, getting your turbo all nice and oiled and your intake oiled, you don't want none of that. So this catch can does install here. Most guys I've seen install it right on the uh, upper fan shroud. It screws right in, fits perfectly. One side goes to the CDR, one side goes to the intake and it just helps keep everything nice and clean. Um, I am gonna tuck up some of these wires that I didn't do last time when I did the uh, fast fuel system install. Uh, it was kind of just a rush, put everything together and make it run. So right now I'm gonna work on buttoning back up the front. I'm gonna put the oil fill cover back on. I'm gonna put the intake manifold back on and uh, I'll meet you back there. Alrighty, so we got the pump in. Bottom two injection pump bolts nuts are loose still. Top one snug down because we have to time it. We have the upper intake and a lower intake and the whole harness all plugged back together now. Make sure all your grounds are connected. Now we're going to move on to the fluid damper. So we're going to have to get down there. Take out those four bolts. Get the billet aluminum pulley off from Leroy Diesel. So I'll take this belt off, get that pulley off. And uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll take the harmonic balancer off. Here, right, get the bolts out of the pulley. Now the pulley. Sometimes they don't want to pop off. Sometimes they need a little convincing. As they drop the phone. Now that we got the pulley off those four bolts, now I'm going to get my puller, my harmonic balancer puller, and we'll get down there. We have to take off this nut in the front of the motor. I don't remember what size that is, but you're going to pull that off, and then we're going to install the pulley puller, and we're going to get this off. All right, guys, we have the puller installed down there. And uh, we have a uh, big ratcheting breaker bar. And we're pulling that off. So once we get that off, I'll catch back up with you with the install of the fluid damper. And uh, look who decided to join us. We have Danielle here. Hi. Uh, it is 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And she rolled out of bed probably about one o'clock. So she had to get her beauty sleep after last night's race. Alright, get the balancer off. Uh, any of you guys that your front seal is leaking, might as well do it now while you can. It's a lot easier to do it now. Now there is a keyway slot for the damper. This is my factory damper, and as you can see, we're bulging rubber out there. It's also starting to push out the back. And this has less than 4,000 miles on it, so I would take a look at your fluid. I would look, take a look at your harmonic balancing. Now, this is the fluid damper. One piece, no rubber. Also has a keyway slot. Now to install this. You don't have to have a gear wrench balancer install kit. Uh, but it does make uh, everything a lot easier. So you do need a kit. The 
crank bolt is an M16 by 1.5. This kit has a bunch of adapters for everything. So pretty much we're going to thread this into the block, into the crank. We're going to slide that on. Daniel's moccasins. And uh, we're going to tighten this down. And that's how we install it. All right, guys. You got the fluid damper on. Crank bolt tightened down. Uh, it's torqued to some obnoxious number, like 225 foot pounds, I believe. Um, I'll post what it is. So basically, you're going to install this until it bottoms out. So I can't go any further. And now uh, you'll just take these four bolts and you'll bolt this aluminum pulley back on. And then we'll reinstall the belt and that'll be it. All right, we got her all buttoned up. Fans back on, belts back on, pulleys back on. I ran a new fuel line from the filter to the injection pump because you guys were bitching that it was too short. So it's longer now. Uh, also remember to install that fuel line after said done because when you don't uh, you spray diesel everywhere So that was my fault but now I Have my laptop hooked up over here with the GM TD scan tech software and We are connected with the ALDL interface cable for OBD1 so Turn the key on, give her a start. Also, keep in mind, you guys with these tuners, it's got to be in a stock tune when you adjust the timing. So she starts right up. Click connect the truck. Alright, currently we go over the timing. Top that on center offset is negative point negative one point oh six, which is way high right now. Uh, we do TDC time set. See that's bouncing between one point two. 0.9 that's way off so first thing we're going to look at is we're going to try to get this top dead center offset between 0.25 negative 0.25 and negative 0.75 that is the goal here and we do that and we do that by turning the pump as of right now we are Definitely very high, so we're gonna have to adjust the pump accordingly. Now, on the website, Quadstar does sell this timing pump, this in pump timing wrench tool that he came out with. Uh, this was a prototype, so the new ones are actually laser etched Quadstar tuning. They have plus and minus on them, so you know which way you're turning it to advance or retard the timing. Um, and the new ones are actually a little bit thinner. Uh, it's a little easier to work with, but uh, these definitely come in handy if you're going to be doing it. Now these, it's going to be a little hard to show you in the engine bay. Um, let me walk over to my pump and I'll show you how this attaches. This actually is a great tool that he came out with. So on your injection pump that I've been training now for the past hour, this... Goes on the back of the pump like this, and it pops into those two holes. And you'll put a 3 H ratchet in here, and this enables you to pivot the pump back and forth. Now, what you guys have to keep in mind while you're adjusting timing is the fact that every millimeter that you move this pump is two degrees of timing. So it does not take a lot. To adjust the timing on this every little tiny bit you may not even know you moved the pump but you may have moved the timing so you have to check this now also when you guys are 
setting timing you need to be at at least 170 180 degrees i believe um for the computer to relearn the top dead center offset now i happen to have if i could find it uh, there it is um i happen to have a resistor so this allows you to set timing with the engine cold it just tells the computer that it's at temperature so it saves a lot of time you don't have to sit here idling now this is going to you can unplug your coolant temp sensor that's on the crossover up top here and then this this is kind of difficult to do with one hand but you're going to plug the fuller into this plugs in there like that and now the computer thinks that your engine is at 180 degrees 170 i think it's 176 to be honest i believe that's what the fooler does so now what we're going to do is we're going to put this tool on the back of the pump now, you might have to move some stuff out of the way to get it down there. But it does go in there and it does fit. It is pretty snug, but it holds it in the pump very well. As you can see, it's in the back of the pump. Now I'll get my, uh, my little 3 8 uh, breaker bar. I can turn this back and forth and we'll get this timed out. Uh, mine being at 1.2, I have to go towards the passenger side to retard this. So we'll uh, tune back in with the computer. All right, guys, I know it's kind of hard to hear me over this thing, but uh, we are plugged in, we're running. That's our top dead center offset. We are between negative 0.25 and negative 0.75. Come over here to time set. We're averaging just about 3.5, 3.6, jump in between the two, so that's perfect. If you get that number close, that number will also be close. Focus on that number. And now if we go back out to the dashboard. That is a way better injection pulse with, and this is now with a number five uh, resistor in the PMD. So uh, we're doing pretty good here. So timing's all set. Truck's running well. Speedometer likes to do that occasionally. If I push the clutch in. Sometimes it goes away. I know one of you was talking about, will the fluid damper take away the clackiness? No. Uh, did it smooth out the idle in the truck? Yes, a lot. Um, I don't have a before uh, video of what the idle was as far as roughness wise. Um, currently looking to see if I can find a water bottle or something. the water bottle
don't know if you guys can see that, but that's sitting on my radiator support. And the engine harmonics are very, very, very little. So sitting inside the cab of the truck, I will say that the engine is running a lot smoother than it was. Once the water stops moving around. So that's currently sitting on my laptop that's kind of bouncing, so let me move that. But. That is the current vibration in here. So I definitely smoothed it out a ton. Uh, that's all I have for today's video. We'll be doing some uh, update later on. We're trying to get ready for King of the Street. Uh, we're driving this truck with uh, my girlfriend Danielle. And we're going to meet up with Cortland. I believe uh, Verlin's going and a couple other guys from the 6.5 Turbo Diesel page and Quad Star page. Uh, we're hoping to get John out there so we could all kind of hang out and talk 6.5s and kind of be nerdy. Uh, but... I'll have an update later on. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, like, subscribe, and uh, hit that notification button so that way you can uh, stay in touch every time I upload a video. See you later.